Thanks very much, everyone. Joining us now is Tony Khan, President and CEO of ADW. Uh, Tony has some opening remarks, and then we'll move on to the Q&A. Tony? Thank you. Thank you. I've never had to uh, give opening remarks before the uh, Scrum, and, and usually the Scrum's are really fun. I just wanted to give a note uh, at the beginning and say that, you know, health and safety of the wrestlers is always the most important thing at AEW. And I just wanted to give everybody an update on Matt Hardy, and that is most importantly, Matt is okay and looks like Matt's going to be okay. Uh, what happened with Matt uh, was uh, Matt had taken a, a fall on the match, and I stopped the match, paused the match, and uh, sent the doctor to check on him. And I was concerned uh, that Matt could be hurt, so I, I rang the bell to pause the match. And then uh, when uh, the doctor checked on him, uh, the doctor had passed him and cleared him on the protocol. He checked with Matt, uh, and uh, then Matt had come back after, and he's passed the concussion protocol, uh, and he's doing okay. I spoke to him uh, right after the match, and then again just now. Uh, he went as a precaution uh, to the hospital just to, for tests to check out that he's okay, but it looks like he's okay, which is why the doctor cleared him to continue. Uh, and uh, it, and uh, it was not... It was not something uh, any of us uh, enjoyed, and it was uh, something uh, that was a scary moment. But the most important thing is that Matt is okay, and uh, uh, we're all really glad. Uh, uh, thank you very much to everybody for giving me a moment to say that. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, we have a few questions. Uh, the first question is from Justin Barrasso at Sports Illustrated. Justin? Sure. Yeah, Tony, thanks for the uh, opportunity to ask. I'm going to follow up on the Hardy Guevara match. Sure. Just, just for a little more clarification, and thank you for touching on that. It looked like Hardy was adamant that he continue, which in that tenuous situation is completely understandable, but also highlights the reason why there's a medical team in place to make those decisions. It's really tough because you're in real time on pay per view. Uh, it looked, you know, from the, bl to the blind eye, like the medical team may have been overruled. Was there time no. to make a proper decision? Yes, and, there was time. It was, I, it was a, actually, it was a good amount of time, Justin. So, yeah, there was. I, I'm sorry. I, I, and I'm, if you have another question, please follow up with it. But I just want no, to No, that's okay. Know. Thanks. Great. Okay. Well, the doctor did, uh, the doctor did uh, clear him. Matt did not pressure him. And Dr. Samson would not be pressured into clearing anybody. Uh, he's pulled people from our shows without hesitation, uh, whether it's been, you know, for over something with a blood test or with an injury. And he's really strict about that stuff, and that's why when people have had injuries that he didn't feel comfortable about people uh, doing physicality or wrestling with, we never put those people out there. So I never would have uh, gone against the doctor's decision. And most importantly, Matt would not have been able to overrule the doctor's decision, not with the doctor himself or with me. And uh, so that is what happened. The doctor cleared him, which is the first and foremost important thing. Matt also did want to continue. Uh, but the doctor cleared him. So when at that point, when the doctor cleared him to continue, Matt clearly wanted to continue. Uh, that's why we continue. Thanks. Okay, next question is from Joel Torres from Contralona. Joel. Hi, Tony. How you doing? I'm good, Joel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask you, um, uh, here, I, I'm from Puerto Rico, and we have seen a lot of talents from Puerto Rico, Mexico, and Cuba, and other places uh, in AEW. I want to ask you, is this something that we are going to see uh, continuously in, in AEW? Um, I know, you know, they, they're having a great spotlight here in the in All Elite Wrestling. What are your thoughts about that? Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, I love a lot of the, I love the, all the performers. Uh, that are classified uh, under what you said. I think we have some great uh, performers uh, with the background uh, that you, you know, are interested in. And I think it's great that, that you like those wrestlers. I definitely think you'll see a lot more of uh, Santana and Ortiz, uh, the Lucha Brothers, uh, and Sammy and other people I think you're referring to. Uh, the Lucha Brothers, I think, are two of the best luchadors in the world. Uh, they, you know, they're a great tag team, but I think they're both great singles wrestlers. And I am a big fan of Lucha Libre. And, uh, you know, I'm always on the lookout for the next big luchador. And uh, so as far as performance from Mexico, we do keep an eye on them. Uh, we've have worked with AAA in the past. Uh, I also watch a lot of CMLL, uh, both, you know, recently and historically. I've watched a lot of CMLL over the years. And 
in Puerto Rico. It's got a great history of wrestling. And uh, absolutely, I'd love to get stars from Puerto Rico, too. That's a great question. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Next question is from Connor Casey at Comic Book. Hey, Tony. Appreciate you doing this tonight. Really, really awesome show. Um, John mentioned it during his interview just now. I talked to Kenny a couple weeks ago. He said the same thing, and then it's the humidity there in Jacksonville has been a bit debilitating. Um, have you been given any sort of update as to when you guys will be allowed to start uh, uh, performing inside of indoors and uh, start touring again? Has there been any update on that front? We're allowed to perform indoors. It's a choice. I think... Uh, I Pushing hydration very hard. There have been a lot of lectures. The doctors strongly push it. I strongly push it. Uh, and the coaches and referees strongly push everybody. And we push the referees and coaches and all of us to drink a lot of water, which is why uh, we have literally thousands and thousands of water bottles around here. Um, and it was certainly no shortage of supply of water bottles around Daly's Place tonight. And uh, any of the shows we do, for that matter, we've really been pushing it. And... Uh, you know, the heat and humidity is in the summer uh, typically very high in Jacksonville, but COVID-19 uh, has been, you know, first and foremost, uh, in addition to really, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's better to be outdoors uh, and try to manage the heat and uh, utilizing, uh, you know, hydration. Uh, this is the same environment many, many football teams play in and uh, teams play outdoors. But furthermore, uh, outdoor, the risk of the spread of the virus is far, far, far lower. And everybody here has been tested. Uh, but for safety, I think the best thing to do is run outdoor shows. And we've been running outdoor shows for months. Uh, and I think it's, it's the best environment, even though there are some drawbacks with obviously the climate. Uh, Frankly, being outside in the open air is a, is a big positive for what we're trying to achieve and keep everybody safe and minimize the spread of COVID. Thanks. Next question is from Bill Apter at One Wrestling. Bill. Tony Khan. Hey, Bill. Good to see you. Um, so I have two really quick questions. First of all, you said that you were going to go out and put on the best pay-per-view. Was this that pay-per-view you dreamed about? It was a great pay-per-view, yeah. I, I thought it was a, a great all-out, and this was a pay-per-view I dreamed about. I had a scary uh, moment. We all had a scary moment. I was I was scared for Matt. I've never, uh, rang, I've never rang the bell on a match before and never been uh, never paused a match before and never been in that position. We've sent the dock out many times to check on people, but uh, never where I was going to stop the match until I knew that it was good to continue and had the okay from both uh, the performance the, the wrestler and the doctor and sure. uh that was a scary moment but uh so i'm i thought it was a great show uh in terms of the rest of the show i loved it uh i'd love to talk about everything else uh, you know we talk about that and i can still talk about that but um you know i would be remiss if i didn't talk about the main event that just came on uh john moxley and yeah uh, it was just unbelievable uh those guys had such a great match and uh, i'm really Really happy for both of them because uh, that was a great pay per view main event. Uh, again, being outside, you know, it was a it was a big show. There were a lot of big matches. Um, it was a very very hot night. Uh, there was there was you know there was some crazy stuff. I mean, between uh, um, you know obviously uh, us having a, a scary moment with Matt, and then uh, you know fan trying to. Make a beeline at John. And thank God, uh, security. Uh, that's you know, at all sporting events, that's why you have to have a ton of security. And here we we brought a ton of security, and for the safety of the performers. Also, frankly, we had an increased security presence to enforce mask wearing. Uh, and we had a great team up there, and the AEW staff actually uh, were the ones that were on top of that, and they did a great job. So that was a great moment. Uh, but in terms of the wrestling, yeah, I love this pay per view. Uh, Britt Baker and Swole, what they did was, I thought was really fun. It was, it was the limitations. Britt was coming off of serious leg injury and hadn't done any physicality until this past week. Uh, and that was why, you know, for a lot of reasons, I think it made a lot of sense uh, to protect her in this match. But at the same time, uh, I thought her ideas were great. I thought it's a, it may be a polarizing match for some people. I really enjoyed it. And I thought, uh, for all the people that wanted to see it on the pay-per-view, it would be, it'd be great. And uh, the Young Bucks match was excellent. Uh, the Jurassic Express 
and the Young Bucks have incredible chemistry. We've seen him in the six-man tag recently. He was excellent on Dynamite. And I thought that uh, really that was a, a great match to start the live uh, part, you know, live uh, in Daly's Place aspect of uh, All Out. And then I really, really loved um, the world title matches across the board. Uh, Sheeta and Thunder Rosa was tremendous. Uh, thank you, Billy, uh, for putting something together and sending your champion, Thunder Rosa. I thought she did very well. Um, and then the world tag team title match was tremendous. I uh, really, really enjoyed it. It was everything I think we thought that title match could be. And FTR, great tag champs. And then Moxley and MJF killed it. I thought they were awesome. And it was a great main event. So I loved, I loved the show, even though um, there were a couple of uh, moments where I was nervous. Thanks. Next up, we have AJ. AJ, question for Tony? Hello. My question for Tony is, We've seen Matt Cardona a few times on AEW Dynamite and the pay-per-view. Is he getting signed to AEW soon? Uh, it's a really good question, AJ. That's like uh, you, you've uh, got a great question, and uh, we'll see. About, we'll have to see. Uh, I can't say 100%. Uh, I can't speak for Matt, but I can speak for us that I've had a great experience working with Matt, and I hope he's really enjoyed it here. And uh, I think Matt would be a great person in AEW, but uh, we'll have to see. Uh, it, it's not done yet either way. But it's a great question, AJ. Thank you, man. Okay, we've got John Alba from Spectrum Sports. Hey, Tony, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, uh, quickly on the first front, one more thing on Matt Hardy. Uh, was there any hesitance to allow him to climb the scaffolding after you did stop the match? I understand he did pass the protocol, but to still have him work such a dangerous uh, stunt after that. And then you had mentioned that the Thunder Rosa match was the one that you had been really most looking forward to. Uh, what kind of precedence would you have on, on working further with Thunder Rosa down the line? Uh, okay, sure. I'll take the, the first question first, uh, I guess that's okay. Um, there, you know, as far as that goes, yes, uh, I was extremely concerned about that because I knew uh, that was going to happen. So, yeah, I uh, did was, was very concerned about that, and that's why I paused it because I didn't feel good until I got a clearance that this is definitely okay uh, with you to do that. And so that's why I paused the match, which, again, we've never done. Uh, but uh, I thought, given what was you know ahead and what he would probably want to be doing in this match, I would be on you know very, very cautious uh, by sending the doctor to check. And uh, like I said, it was a it was a nervous moment and a scary moment. But that is why you know, like you said, knowing uh, what these guys do and and what they were thinking, I wanted to be sure that he was cleared to keep going. And then uh, on Thunder Rosa. I think she's tremendous. Uh, I would love to bring her back. I can't speak for the NWA if they'd like to send her back, but she's she's a great wrestler and she's a great credit to her company. And uh, she did not win the AEW title tonight, but I think she is a great champion. And I would love to work with her again. Uh, it's not all up to me, but if I could work something out with Billy, uh, I'd love to have Thunder Rosa come back. Next question is from Stephanie Franchon from Steel Chair. Hi, Tony. Hi, Stephanie. Um, uh, sorry, 614 France, so I'm a little out there. I uh, wanted to talk about uh, the two for now, because when we did the media call on Thursday, we were talking about all oh, from the main, main world main show, we pushed yeah. it to Dubai and, and finally uh, we learned yesterday or today that it was coming back to the main show. So w what happened and what made it this extraordinary moment, I'm going to the dentist on Monday, uh, uh, I will fear it <laughs> forever, but uh, what made the change, what made the change happen? Thank you. I was at the dentist's office uh, when we were filming with, I was there with, it was, I was really enjoying it and I was there and I was keeping an eye on the timing 
And after we finished filming, I looked at the timing of it and I know what was in the show and I wanted to be conservative. And I also felt like going into it, I wasn't sure how much Brit was able going to be able to do. So if it was going to be something where I didn't feel comfortable, uh, you know, asking people to pay for it, uh, I wouldn't have put it on the show. And that's why I didn't want to take a chance. Uh, you know, it was definitely for storyline and, and uh, for a lot of reasons. It was something we wanted to do. And I thought it was a great moment for Swole. And I thought it was an incredible performance by Brit. And I was really happy for both of them. And as I was there watching it and we gone through this, they were doing such an amazing job, the two of them. And I was there, you know, with Kenny Omega, Jerry Lynn, and Dustin Rhodes, and a camera crew. And I thought about it, and I looked around, and I had my, you know, my show format, and my, I, I timed the shows, and I looked through and said, you know what, let's put this on the main show. I think I'm going to do it. Uh, I, I really like uh, what they're doing. I think this was a great match. At, and now that I know that there's time and we can work it in, then yeah, let's do it. And I think you saw it was a long show. Uh, tonight, and I just wanted to make sure that we'd be able to actually literally fit it in the pay-per-view window, and we were able to, and it was great, and most importantly, they got through it, and, and I was really glad uh, Swole got such a big win, and I was happy for Britt that she's cleared to come back, and she had this this big match that I thought, you know, even though she didn't win the match, she uh, was showcased in such a unique way, and uh, there's nobody else in wrestling that could have done what she did in this match, is like the horror movie villain in so many ways, the evil dentist, but also she's uh, just a great performer. She's a great wrestler and a great person. But I was, that's why uh, I changed my mind. Thanks. We've got Sean Laylos from Monsters and Critics. Hey, Sean. How are you? Good, Sean. Thanks, man. Enjoyed the show. It's, it's hard to believe it's been almost a year since uh, the TV show started, Dynamite. I mean, you're coming up on, on your second year now starting up. I was yeah, looking at some awesome. of the new people you guys have signed. I was listening to Homicide on Chris Jericho's podcast. Talk about how he came in and wrestled Cody. And he impressed you guys. And you guys gave him a job. I mean, he had just sold his boots and his tights just to pay rent. And now he has a contract. He's able to actually... Yeah. yeah I said Homicide, I think. I didn't mean Homicide. You I said Homicide, that. but I knew you meant Eddie Kingston. Yeah. Eddie yeah. Kingston. But um, t- talk a little bit. I mean, he was... the. We next- have the other guys from that. We have the other guys from that... that- LAX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so Eddie, we, we don't call him that here. That's no, you don't. You don't. That's true. You, um, Eddie was the last one eliminated in the Battle Royal. So, I mean, this is, that was a pretty big deal for him. Talk a little bit about him. Talk a little bit about um, some of the other new, the new wrestlers that you brought in that, that were competing on the pay for you tonight after going into this second year on TV. We have really good, uh, really good eyes for talent around here. The people that work here uh, do a great job scouting and uh, people make suggestions and it's not that easy to get hired here. I think like, especially at this point through the pandemic, you know, people are getting hired on merit and Eddie's a great example. I've talked at length about Ricky, uh, but with Eddie, uh, it was a similar situation to with Ricky Starks. Cody had come in uh, with ideas for possible opponents that he could work TNT title matches with. And I looked at his list, uh, the, the, you know, the first wave, by far my favorite name in that first batch was Ricky Starks. And then uh, we got into another one, and I really liked Eddie Kingston. I'd never met either one of them. Eddie's work I was at much more familiar with in a lengthier career, uh, but I'd seen both of them. Actually, I'd seen both of them on uh, the NWA also. And, and uh, you know, I really liked both guys, but I wanted to see in person before, you know, before we made a big commitment. And both guys just crushed it. I mean, it was really like a tryout match, and we do stuff like that all the time. Uh, bring people in uh, and give them an opportunity to sink or swim. And, and frankly, even if you don't sign somebody, it doesn't mean they sank. It's a t- you know, you really, really, really have to swim at a very, very, very high level uh, to walk back and, and have me, uh, you know, want to sign somebody like that. And uh, in case of Eddie, I thought he was great in the match. And also it was a situation where we have uh, the Lucha brothers who, you know, pack is in England. And I thought Eddie could work a storyline with them. And Eddie would also be great with the butcher and the blade Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Brothers were in the Eight Man at Fighter Fest with FTR and the Young Bucks, and so uh, I just had a light bulb after the match. Originally, Ricky was a little bit more of a light bulb. Ricky was in the ring with Cody, and it was like, oh, this is this guy's great. Like, this is what you'll do with him, and you know that's where Ricky is now. It's like a, on the spot, it was pretty obvious. 
But um, with Eddie, he had these great matches. I, I knew we could do something with Eddie. His, his promos are so good, and he's got such great presence, and he's a great wrestler. And um, so that's, you know, with Eddie, it took a little bit longer to come up with the idea than as opposed to Ricky right away. But a lot of great people coming into AEW. There's more great people coming into AEW. I think uh, we've got something fun planned for Wednesday. I think everyone will enjoy uh, speculating on who Kip Sabian's best man for his wedding might be. Uh, and the wedding is a ways off. I think we have the bachelor party first, but that's going to be fun. And uh, I'm constantly looking at new talent. We have great eyes here. I can't say enough about Cody and the Young Bucks and Kenny, all the people uh, that they've suggested. Jericho, too. Uh, so many of the top people here are people that they brought up in the first place, and those people have done uh, an amazing job. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of uh, the system we have. Great. Next question, Scott Fishman from TV Insider. Hey, Tony. How's it going? Good, Scott. How are you? Good. Um, so we talked about Thunder Rose and just the great match that she had with Sheeta. Um, fans are so passionate about women's wrestling. Um, a lot of fans have wanted to see more women's wrestling on Dynamite and other AEW shows. What do you say to them about kind of just finding the balance of women on the show and having those women's matches, but also making it matter as well? Well, it, the match that Thunder Rosa had with Serena Deep this match, I, I, this past week, I'm sorry, was one of the best matches we've had on Dynamite in a long time, and not just women's matches, a great match. Uh, Might have been the match of the night, and uh, it was really, really a tremendous match, and I think we got to keep consistently great matches like uh, the ones we've been having. And um, for me, I am always looking to add more programming. I would always like to add more hours of programming, it's no secret that we are looking to add a third hour of television on TNT, which will open up more opportunities for people on the roster. But we're also looking at adding more series, streaming properties. And I'd like to expand the roster. And I'd also like to expand our programming to give more hours in the week for the roster to perform. And uh, I think there's demand for it. Last question from Justin Schilligal at 98 Rock, Baltimore. Justin? Tony, really appreciate your time tonight. Fantastic pay-per-view, as they always tend to be. And I want to get back to something that you just touched on prior with Kip Sabian. Really funny segment about the upcoming bachelor party and the wedding. And at the very end, you had a nice little bit about some of his social media and streaming services, which I know a lot of people have been discussing in the past couple of days with one of your competitors actually shuttering it and shutting it down and sort of squashing it. What is AEW's official stance on your wrestlers secondary and tertiary revenue streams such as cameo twitch youtube uh what's your stance on your performers and your entertainers turning to those sources of revenue and entertainment to reach out to their fans it's a very topical question uh it's a good question and it's come up recently for a lot of wrestlers for our people i don't want people to be concerned that i'm going to stop them from trying to monetize their twitch or even, you know, appearance money and things of that nature. I think there are gray areas, and I think, uh, you know, all of these different mediums, all these platforms are different, and I'd probably have different answers on different platforms. I think uh, some sponsorship stuff is a gray area. Uh, you know, if you, one of your big star uh, wrestlers was to go try and get, uh, like, a Pepsi sponsorship under their Twitch and not as a wrestler, you'd be like, well, that seems like you're trying to circumvent uh, the company maybe, but in, for the most part, uh, I think that, uh, you know, I, I support people going out and trying to go out on Twitch and, and monetizing that platform. And uh, I'm okay with people monetizing their YouTube, which I think is very clear here uh, because a lot of people have YouTube shows and uh, famously being the elite, the Unbuck show is not on the AEW channel, but we support it. And, our wrestlers are all over it, and uh, but it's not AEW show. And I think a lot of our wrestlers have their own vlogs and, and shows and social media properties. So it's a great question. Uh, I think Kip wanted to have some fun, and I thought it was fun. Uh, Kip is big on Twitch, and, you know, that's one. I don't know every platform. I'm not on every platform, but that's one platform I know is really popular and, and Kip loves, and I'm not going to try and, stop him from using me <laughs> so uh i guess that's that's kind of it i think it's different you know depending on what platform you're talking about and how you're addressing it and 
and you know I definitely think I wouldn't tell people they can't do anything outside of the company though that seems uh, too unfair and, and pretty pretty strong policy I don't know and I'm not saying anybody else has that policy but if, as far as like saying you can't do anything outside of what we're doing uh, I wouldn't do that Thanks very much, Tony. And thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we're looking forward to seeing you at the next one. Thanks again, and have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you.